Chapter Fourteen of Grammarland by M. L. Nesbit. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Prepositions govern the objective case. When the parts of speech found themselves so suddenly turned out of the court, they collected in a group before the door and looked at each other in astonishment. Here is a pretty thing," said Mister Noun indignantly. "Fine way to treat us, indeed." And after all, I only said what is true," said preposition. "I do put every noun or pronoun that comes after my words in the objective case, do I not, Doctor Syntax? Prepositions govern the objective case," said Doctor Syntax in his usual monotonous voice. Then, lifting his spectacles, he twisted his head round to look at preposition, and actually deigned to explain his words by saying. Whatever noun or pronoun a preposition is placed before and refers to, must be in the objective case. Speak to him," murmured Sergeant Parsing, as if he were talking to himself. "Him," a pronoun, objective case, governed by the preposition to. Mister Pronoun, you hear that?" exclaimed Mister Noun. "This little preposition is said to govern us, you and me, in the objective case." Very impertinent, on my word. On my word, again muttered Sergeant Parsing. Word, a noun, objective case, governed by the preposition on. However, it does not matter to me," continued Mister Noun, without taking any notice of Sergeant Parsing. It will make no difference to me, and he turned away with his hands in his pockets, and began to whistle a tune. It does matter to me, though," said Pronoun, "for I have to alter my words according to the case they are in. I is only in the nominative case, me in the objective, we is nominative, us objective, he nominative, him objective, and so on. You cannot say, 'Look at I.' You must say, 'Look at me.'" "Look at me," echoed Sergeant Parsing. In the same quiet tone, me, objective case, governed by the preposition at. Quite so," continued Pronoun, turning to Sergeant Parsing. "I am objective there. I cannot help it. I must be objective after a preposition." "Yes," said Sergeant Parsing aloud, "and it is very convenient for me that you must. It often helps me to find out whether a word is really a preposition or no. I just try whether it wants." I or me after it. Take when or if, for instance. You can say, "When I go, if I were." So when and if are not prepositions. But you cannot say, "For I" or "From I." You must have the objective case and say, "For me, from me." So for and from are prepositions governing the objective case. You had better take care," said Preposition. "You keep on saying objective case, and if you say it before Judge Grammer, you know you will get us all into trouble again." "Oh, never fear," said Sergeant Parsing. "The judge will listen to us patiently enough next time. Besides, he must hear about objective case, whether he likes it or no, because the prize will partly depend upon it." "The prize? What prize?" cried every one. "Listen." There is to be a grand trial or examination soon. All the schoolroomshire children are to be invited, and all you parts of speech are to make up a story between you. You will each get a mark for every word you give, and whoever gets the most marks will get. Yes, what? What will he get? They all cried out eagerly. Ah, that is a secret. What I want to tell you is that any word that governs another. Will get an extra mark. For instance, when I say, "Listen to me," the preposition "to" puts "me" in the objective case, so "to" will get an extra mark. That is splendid! cried little preposition, clapping his hands and jumping about for joy. I always govern a noun or a pronoun in the objective case, so I shall get two marks every time I come in. Not quite so sure," interrupted Doctor Verb. "Sometimes you come before a verb, to eat, to sleep, to fly, and then you can only get one mark. 
for you do not govern me, my little dear, seeing that verbs do not have a case at all. Ah, but you have to agree with your nominative case, Dr. Verb, said Pronoun. So I suppose when I am nominative, I shall have an extra mark, for I might be said to govern you in a sort of way. No, no, said Sergeant Parsing, putting in his word. You are not said to govern Dr. Verb. He agrees with you, that is all. But the nominative case, being a very honorable one, will always get two marks. Then, said Mr. Noun, suddenly stopping his whistling and taking an interest in the conversation, I am, of course, to get two marks for every noun in the nominative case? Certainly, answered Sergeant Parsing. And in the objective case also? asked Mr. Noun. No, no, said Sergeant Parsing, laughing. That would be too much of a good thing, since your words are nearly always either nominative or objective. No, no. On the contrary, the objective case, being governed by other words, even such little trifles as prepositions, is not considered at all an honorable case, and therefore will not only give a noun or a pronoun no extra marks, but will take away one of those it already has. For instance, if I am parsing, come to me, and I give Mr. Pronoun a mark for me, I must strike out that mark as soon as I find that me is in the objective case, and must give it to preposition for his little word, to, which governs me. Mr. Noun and Mr. Pronoun both looked very dismal at these tidings, and then Mr. Noun said, I hope no one else except preposition can put me into the objective case. Oh, yes, indeed I can, cried Dr. Verb, bustling up eagerly. But Sergeant Parsing stopped him. No, no, Dr. Verb, he said, we are not going to begin that question. No notice will be given of any noun or pronouns being in the objective case, unless it is governed by a preposition. That is the rule for this trial. Another time, perhaps, your rights will be considered. Sergeant Parsing then took the following lines to Schoolroomshire, that every objective case governed by a preposition might be found out. Tom called for me. I went with him. We climbed upon a rock. There over the sea we looked for thee till seven of the clock. And then a white sail over the main brought back our sailor boy again. Fill up the blanks with a noun or pronoun, and say whether it will be nominative or objective. Blank went for a walk yesterday. Blank walked through a dark. Blank, under tall. Blank. Suddenly, when blank were in a very lonely blank, blank heard the steps of some blank crashing through the blank. What can it be? blank cried. Blank stopped to listen. The blank came nearer. Two bright eyes gleamed at us through the blank, and in another blank, outbounded with a deep blank that made echoes all round us, our own dear old blank, who had broken his chain, escaped from the blank, and had come out to look for blank. End of chapter 14